Hello, good afternoon mga ka-webinar. Andito kami pong muli para maghatid po sa inyo ng kaalaman sa G Suite. I am Christian Lynette Kasem. And, and I'm Elvin Kasem. And uh, we are husband and wife. Yan po. Sa so, mga nagtatanong po, yes, we are husband and wife team. And we are both IT practitioners. Um, I do digital media stuff content management and and i do uh, programming administration and uh, it maintenance actually to cut it short tignan niyo na lang po yung profile namin nandiyan po sa uh, presentation sa link tr.e tapos slash elvin x dinet so nandiyan po yung link in profile namin para mas makilala niyo po kami and to start with Magsishare po ako ng practical tips or mga skills na pwede natin ma-acquire while, while using G Suite tools. Ayan. Okay. So, as we prepare ourselves for to teach and foster learning amid this pandemic, ang G Suite for Education. Sa IC, sa IT perspective, it is uh, fast yung setup niya. It is free for schools, priceless for students, next level collaboration, and making a difference in and out of the classroom. Fast setup. Simple lang kasi siya. And send it, you can centrally manage it at any scale. Ang maganda pa doon, automatic update siya. So everyone always has the latest features. And doon sa G Suite for Education, included ang Google Classroom to help teachers manage their classroom seamlessly. And for uh, free siya, full productivity suite included na walang cost sa schools. And bukod, bukod pa doon sa free, free din yung 24-7 support niya. And makakaasa ka na um, 24-7 din yung security na wala tayong additional cost. Um, I love G Suite kasi I can collaborate with my co-teachers before. At ngayon, uh, nagagamit ko din siya as a professional sa Commission on Higher Education. I, uh, we can collaborate and access the work anytime, anywhere, on any device. So, we can edit a certain document na sabay-sabay na hindi na kailangan i-print, tapos i-edit ulit. Um, it is a paperless setup. And maganda siya because it feature, the features let teachers collaborate one-on-one -on -one or with the whole class. Um, 
Sa use niya sa classroom, you can give instant feedback and track individual progress sa Google Classroom ito. And remove time-consuming organizational tasks so teacher can focus on teaching. And meron siyang machine learning sa, sa IT speak. Meron siyang machine learning that helps to streamline writing and research. So, kompleto siya. The classroom has been simplified because of G Suite. So, free solution siya for all of your educational needs. Siguro nakikita niyo na to kapag meron kayong Android phone. Merong mga uh, Google tools agad na nasa folder sa phone niyo, 'di ba? So, actually yung mga Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Drive, Google Classroom, lahat 'yan pwede niyo'ng ma-download via Play Store or App Store kung sa iPhone naman. So you can manage your classroom with ease. You can create classes, distribute assignments, give quizzes using Google Form. You can also send feedback using Google Form. So yung feedback form na ginagamit namin, uh, Google Form yon. And then uh, you can also manage all the ta task. Yon. You can build to-do list, create task reminders, and schedule meetings. So. Dito sa CHED Regional Office 1, we do facilitate uh, Google Meet. Well, we utilize Google Meet sa mga meeting namin ngayong uh, GCQ. And we can administer with confidence kasi pwede naming mamanage yung mga devices. And sa G Suite, pwede kang mag-add ng students then. So, you can communicate your way. You can connect with Gmail. So, Nagagamit yun naman na ito. And you can collaborate anywhere because you can co-edit documents, spreadsheets, and presentation in real time. So after um, my topic, meron akong bonus topic sa inyo, yung Google Skill Shop. So ito, um, maganda siya. May maram, marami, maganda siyang platform for um, learning po. So dito. So, introduce ko lang sa inyo one of my favorite um, Google for Education tools, which is Applied Digital Skills. So, Google has developed a technology skills curriculum called Applied Digital Skills. So, it can really foster innovation. It focuses on relevant life application ra rather than the tool. Um, explain ko kung bakit. Uh, yan. It teaches also good digital citizenship and online ethics and minimizes prescriptive instruction. Ito yung mga activity na pwede mong magawa sa applied digital skills. Ang applied digital skills kasi, um, you can learn a practical life skill and at the same time, natututo ka din ng isang digital application skill. Kaya niyan. If then adventure stories. So students can brainstorm story elements in Google Docs and create an in interactive if then adventure story in Google Slides. So Google Docs para a uh, word processing document ng Google and yung Google Slides um para a PowerPoint pero you can collaborate um anytime and anywhere. So the life skills students are practicing in, in this activity are storyboarding and group decision making. And while doing so, they will also learn a number of valuable digital skills. Paano ba gumamit ng comments to share ideas and collaborate in real time in Google Docs? And as well as how to implement hyperlinks in Google Slides to create customize, customizable presentation or stories. Another activity that you can facilitate sa applied digital skills is research and develop a topic. Um, in this unit, ang practical life skill na matutunan ng estudyante ay yung mag-conduct ng research while verifying source credibility. And then ang digital application skill niya, you can use various search strategies including keywords, yan. So, 
ang life skill na natututunan nila ay yung they are practicing research and source evaluation. And yung valuable digital skills na acquire nila is mag-add ng table ng docs to organize and evaluate information. Kailangan din nating turuan yung mga estudyante uh, ng applied digital skill na to to spot fake news kasi yun yung kailangan natin ngayon. The other um, activity that you can utilize in applied digital skills is planning an event. Yan. So in this unit, plan an event, students can choose can choose plan and organize an event. So yung life skill na natututunan ng estudyante is pla are planning and organizing information. And while doing so, natututo na rin sila gumawa ng to-do list sa Google Spreadsheet. And natatrack nila yung mga tasks nila necessary. Um, magpagawa ka ng Gantt chart, yan, using Google Sheets. As well as how to create an event logo in Google Draw and publish a public page with their event information using Google Sites. So, apat yung matututunan nilang digital skills dyan. Um, Google Sheets, uh, Google Draw, Google Docs, and Google Sites. And this activity, um, Guide to an Area, you can also teach the students um, use structured data to create an interactive guide in an area in Sheets. So, yung practical skills na 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 acquire nila dito is organizing and sharing information and natututo din sila ng digital skills like how to organize and structure data in Google Sheets and how to create a customized Google Maps with information that they can share with others. Ito, kailangan natin to hindi lang yung mga estudyante yung plan and budget. So, pwede natin i-incorporate ito sa curriculum or subject na tinuturo natin. So, again, dalawa ang matututunan nila dito, practical life skill and digital application skills. So, sa plan and budget, students can make financial decisions by collecting, organizing, and evaluating data using Google Sheets. Yan, yung practical life skills, they can create a budget for major purchases or a trip. And at the same time, natututo sila to make financial decision using Google Sheets. So, nandyan, how to set and evaluate a budget in Google Sheets. So, how will you start as an educator? Yan. So, punta lang kayo, sign in as a teacher with a Google account. Punta lang kayo sa g.co slash applied digital skills or you can search sa Google applied digital skills lang. Makikita nyo na yung website ng applied digital skills. Pag nakasign in na kayo as a teacher with a Google account, um, you can add the location to dashboard. You can already add the courses na uh, sinabi ko and then you can review lesson plans. And you can share the link and class code with the learners para nakikita mo yung progress nila. So, hopefully, magamit ninyo to, i-incorporate nyo to sa mga subjects na tingin ninyo pwede silang matuto ng applied digital skills. So, another one, this is a new project from Google for Education, yung Teach from Home. So this is a temporary hub of information and tools to help teachers during the during this coronavirus crisis. So I should share ko lang siya. Ayan. So ito, punta lang kayo sa teachfromhome.google. Um okay magalala ibibigay ko yung presentation link mamaya para makita ninyo yung mga links na binigay ko at pwede nyo mapuntahan mamaya. So, this is the web page of Teach From Home. Yan. So, may mga tutorials na siya. Yan, create your first assignment in Google Classroom. 
How do you manage a virtual classroom? Creating a class website for your students. Yan. How do I make lessons accessible to all? Yan. May mga tutorials na kapag clinic natin yung tutorials at itong open. Ayan. So, mag-sign up lang kayo dito para makuha nyo yung mga resources dito sa Teach From Home ng Google. Ayan. The next one. Okay. So, Google Classroom. Uh, para makapunta kayo sa Google Classroom, um, itype nyo lang yung classroom.google.com. Um, meron din siyang app sa Play Store and App Store. So, you can use Google Classroom to set assignments, encourage collaboration, and support communication with students when teaching from home. So, I created um, last night yung quick video. So, ito yung ito yung um, interface or dashboard na makikita ninyo if gagawa kayo ng, ng class. So, mag-create lang kayo ng class. Yung class name. Yan. File processing, for example. Pwede kang magkalagay ng section, ng subject, at kung anong room. Yan. Sa ngayon, siguro hindi, hindi pa applicable yung room. Pero kayo nang bahala kung anong ilalagay nyo doon. Basta ilagay nyo lang yung subject at yung section ng klase ninyo. And then, uh, click nyo lang yung create. And then, um, yeah. Okay. So, pag nakakreate na tayo, ito na yung makikita ninyo. So, para pag ma-invite nyo yung klase, nandyan yung class code. Ibigay nyo lang yan sa kanila. Tapos, pag mag-join sila ng class, i-enter nila yung class code na yun. If magbibigay ka ng PowerPoint presentation sa klase mo, i-click mo lang ito. Ayan. Pwedeng Google Drive, link, file, or YouTube link. So, pwede kang mag-upload ng PowerPoint presentation mo or yung lecture mo. Ayan. So, pag i-upload mo, ganyan. And then, yan na. Pwede kang magbigay ng uh, konting description kung ano yon or message mo sa kanila, download this presentation or download this lecture. And then, kapag na-create mo na yung message mo sa class mo, you can already post it. Makikita na yon ng mga estudyante, notify na sila. Yan. Yun na yun. So, pag magpo-post ka, dito lang, click mo lang yan. Ikaw kung video yung gusto nyong i-share, PowerPoint presentation, um, website, any will do. So, ito yung classwork. Yan. Pwede kang mag-create ng assignment, question, material, or you can reuse post from your other class. Or para mas organize, gawa ka ng topic. Yan. Introduction. Uh, to file processing, for example. And then you can add it. And from there, pwede ka nang mag-create ng assignment mo. Pwede ka mag-upload ng material na babasahin ng klase mo. Nandyan na yun. So sa assignment, yan, you can add or create docs, slides within that assignment. And then... Yan. Pwede ka maglagay ng title, ng instructions. Yan. Pwede ka ding mag-set kung ilan yung points ng estudyante mo. Pati due date niya, pwede kang mag-set ng due date. Yan. And pwede kang mag-upload ng rubrics para mas madali yung, yung um, pag-score mo as an educator or as an instructor. Yan. So, next, Google Forms. Um, para ma-access mo yung Google Forms, just go to forms.google.com. So, Google Forms makes creating quizzes uh, great and grading faster, easier, automated, and customizable. So, hindi lang sa education mo magagamit yung Google Forms. Ang daming gamit niyan, actually. Um, pag magpapa-register ka ng 
ng event, pwede mong gamitin yung Google Forms. Um, kapag hihingi ka ng data, kasi automatically naman na, na meron siyang data analysis eh. Nagkikreate na siya automatically ng, ng graphs. So, siguro, in a personal note, nagamit namin siya nung sa RSVP ng wedding. So, pwede mo siyang gamitin if if gusto mo lang uh, makita kung ilan yung pupunta sa wedding mo, pwede kang gumamit ng Google Forms. So, yun yung ginamit namin noon para mag-RSVP ng mga bisita. So, gumawa ako ng, ng quick um, sample or demo lang ng Google Forms. Ayan. Medyo may technical issue. Skip na lang muna natin. So, um, another um, favorite tool that I love sa G Suite is yung Google Keep. Um, did you know you can personalize Google Keep with custom images to create visually driven notes and lists? So, ito, if, if you're a bit OC, pwedeng-pwede yung app na to kasi uh, pwede mong i-list yung, yung to-do mo, ano yung sa, sa meeting, pwede kang mag-take uh, down notes dito. Hindi pwede mo siyang mabalikan sa phone mo or sa tablet mo or sa de sa desktop, sa laptop mo. Um, kailangan lang naman yan is Google account. So, keep.google.com. Ito yung sample. No, as an educator, ito yung pwede nyong gamitin na, na tool para makita nyo kung ano yung mga list uh, to-do list nyo pa sa klase ninyo. Ayan. Um, ito yung favorite feature namin ngayon, Google Calendar. Kasi dito, pwede ka nang mag-create ng event. Pwede ka mag-add video conferencing um, via Google Meet. Ayan. So, mag-set ka ng um, conference, ng emergency meeting. Pwede mong i-invite yung guest. I-enter mo lang yung email niya. Tapos yun, join with Google Meet. Kapag na-enter nyo yung email address niya, automatically magsesend na sa email niya. And then, ikiklik lang nila yung link ng Google Meet, makakapag-meeting na kayo. Ayan. So, punta lang kayo sa calendar.google.com and then, you can already create a Google Meet um, session doon sa, you can schedule Google Meet doon sa Google Calendar. So, ito siya. So, sa Google Docs naman, actually, um, pare-pare ko na yan. Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides. So, you can collaborate, share your feedback, and work together with your students in real time. So, kahit, kahit yung kaklase mo nasa ibang bayan, tapos ikaw nasa kabilang bayan, kahit hindi na yung magkikita kayo to collaborate um, yung work nyo, kung meron kayong thesis or meron kayong group activity, i-add mo lang yung email niya, i-share mo lang yung documents sa kanya, and make sure pareho kayo na Google account or G Suite account para pareho kayong mag-collaborate. Ayan. So, ito. One of my personal favorite features sa Google Sheets ay yung explore button. Kasi as an educator or as a professional, Marami kayong ginu-utilize na data, di ba? Most of us work with loads of data on spreadsheets. So, di ba ang nice to have an assistant that can help us with our work so that we can speed it up? Yun yung, yun yung ano, yun yung trabaho nung explore button sa baba. Yan. Yung naglulup na GIF dyan. So, merong explore button doon. So, it intelligently gathers the context that we are working upon and nagbibigay na siya ng suggestion kung ano ba yung pwede nating gamitin na, na, na graph. Nandiyan, siya na yung nag, um, nag-generate for you. Uh, dito na natin mapapasok yung machine learning. Si, si Google Sheets, meron siyang machine learning para ma-generate yung intelligent graphs, yung right suggestions na kailangan natin. Hindi na tayo mag-iisip, ay, ano kaya yung magandang um, presentation ng data dito? Hindi na. I-click mo lang yung explore button. Siya na yung mag-generate for you. Ayan. Ayan. 
So ito, for example, eh, yung explore feature, click nyo lang uh, itong explore dito. And then yan, siya na yung mag-generate. Eh, tanongin mo lang siya, which product has highest sum of units? Yan, siya na yung mag-generate for you. I-insert mo na lang yung pivot table. O diba, napakadali. So, nagagamit ko din yan um, sa thesis, sa pag-analyze ng big data. Pag marami, pag marami kang data na process, pwede ito. Yan. So, Google Drive naman, kapag naka-G Suite ka, unlimited storage in G Suite for education, yun yung maganda na um, itatakal ni Elvin mamaya. Yan. So, on a personal, um, as an experience ko, bilang educator noon, meron akong, is, kasi 2013, ginagamit ko na yung G Suite for Education. Pagkata, uh, bago yung klase ko, bago ko i-explain lahat ng topic, yung first time ko lang silang makikilala, ang una kong tinuturo sa kanila ay yung G Suite, yung Google Drive, Google Form, Google Docs. Um, bakit? Kasi hindi lang sa klasik ko pwede nilang gamitin ito. Pwede nilang gamitin ito sa ibang uh, klase. O for example, nung tinuro ko to sa mga estudyante ko, hindi alam na nila kung paano gumamit ng Google Drive, Google Docs, and, sh- and such. Um, lumapit sa akin yung isang estudyante ko, nagte-thank you siya sa akin. Ma'am, thank you. Tinuro mo yung Google Drive. Nakorap kasi yung flash drive ko. Andun yung mga programming code ko. Buti na lang sinave ko siya sa um, Google Drive, yung tinuro mo ma'am, na recover ko. O, diba? Uh, nakakatulong siya kasi um, yung flash drive, it, it's a thing of the past na. So, pati save feature, in, wala rin save feature yung Google Docs kasi it, it automatically saves kung ano yung last na tinipe mo, yun yung sinisave niya. And sa Google Drive naman, nasa cloud naman yan, you can access it anytime. So, wala tayong magiging problema. So, I suggest if if na in love ka na sa G Suite for Education, might as well na ituro mo ito muna bago yung bago yung mga topics mo kasi pwede nilang gamitin ito yung yung klase mo. Okay? Ayun. So, ito there are 45 ways to use G Suite for Education, pero hindi ko na yan itatackle. You can all you can download that at bit.ly slash G Suite 45 ways. So, training deck siya. Um, ito na yung simula mo para um, matutunan pa yung G Suite. Ano yung mga iba't ibang gamit niya? Yung subject specific, sa communication, ano yung mga different add-ons, feature na pwede mong... Um, idagdag sa G Suite. So, 45 uh, ways yan. So, madami. So, maraming learning uh, insights dyan. So, these tools will help you to increase teacher efficiency, student engagement, and school-wide collaboration. So, yan yung link. I-download nyo siya later. Ang ganda niyan. And then, ito na yung sinasabi ko. Skillshop.exceedlms.com uh, so, play ko lang siya. Okay, wait lang. Mm-hmm. So, punta lang kayo sa skillshop that with google.com. So, ni- nilalogin ko lang siya para ipakita sa inyo kung ano yung laman niya. Ayan. So, ito yung mga G Suite for Education resources, yung na-discuss ko kanina, yung teachfromhome.google and edu.google.com. Uh, edu.google.com, that alone, marami ng resources dyan na magagamit ninyo as a teacher. Yan. Okay. So, stop lang. Nishishare ko lang yung screen ng...
So, ito yung edu.google.com. Yan siya. So, may mga madadownload na kayo dito na PDF. Yan. So, may mga teaching resources dito. Para sa mga computer science and information technology instructors, meron tayong coding and CS dito. May digital literacy, creative tools, and... For K-12 naman, may mga STEM tayo dito, language, arts and culture, family engagement, and other resources. So, ito yung edu.google. Meron din code with Google sa mga IT dyan. And training and support, yung nagtanong kanina na paano maging Google uh, educator, nandyan na din. So, okay. Okay. So, isi-share ko lang ulit. Meron pa akong isi-share na isa. Ayan. Ito yung Skillshop. So, skillshop.exceedlms.com So, marami kang pwedeng, may maraming course catalog dito na pwede mong uh, makita. Ayan. And for Google for Education, Merong teacher center dito. Ayan. So, may fundamental training, advanced training. Ayan. So, sa mga gustong maging Google educator, ito siya. Ayan. So, punta lang kayo sa skill shop. Marami kayong pwedeng matutunan na courses dyan. So, hindi lang academics. If gusto nyong matuto about digital marketing, uh, Google My Business, yan. So, pwede nyong gamitin yung platform na to for you. Yan. And then, yan. Balik sa presentation. Yan. Ito. So, this is the link. For my presentation, bit.ly G Suite Presentation 2020. So, ito, i-flash ko lang siya ng few seconds. So, ito siya, G Suite Presentation 2020, bit.ly slash G Suite Presentation 2020. Nandyan lahat ng mga resources na sinabi ko kanina. So, again, maraming maraming salamat and e-learning. Yan. So, Ibibigay ko na yung floor kay Elvin Casa. <laughs> All right, so we're back. So, ang presentation ko naman today is uh, all about setting up your G Suite for Education uh, uh, feature. So, let's say may um, meron kayong website na existing domain or emails, pero hindi kayo gumagamit ng uh, G Suite. So, this topic will be uh, exactly for you. Lalo na yung mga, uh, siguro tawagin nyo na yung mga admin ninyo sa mga websites and everything para malaman nila kung paano iset up. Anyway, um, while reading some of the comments, uh, don't worry, nakarecord po lahat ito. So, pwede nyo pong balikan. So, pwede nyo i-pause. Let's say, hindi kayo naka-note. So, Later on, pwede nyo pong balikan. So, okay. So, let's start. Um, yeah. Mail, rocket mail. So, yahoo.com.ph. Okay? So, yan yung mga common email addresses na ginagamit natin. Pero take note na kapag gumagamit tayo dito, um, anybody kasi pwede mag-sign up ng kanya-kanyang email addresses. So, pwede uh, good yung intention or bad. So, pwede mag-spam or mag-send ng unnecessary emails. Lalo na ngayon sa... Um, more on online 
uh, tayo ngayon, kung naririnig nyo yung phishing email, so makakareceive kayo ng email na, um, email na, let's say, updating yung credit card information. So, huwag datin basta-basta yung open ng mga emails na to. Okay, back to G Suite for Education. Ano ba yung requirements? Ang requirements for G Suite for Education, nandito naman tayo sa Pilipinas. So, ang requirement is edu.ph. So, ganito pa kasi yan. So, ano ba ang domain? So, domain is like .com, .net, .org, .ph, and edu.ph. So, marami pang domains. So, yun yung um, nakikita natin after the dot. Okay? So, domain name, ito yung uh, tinatype natin sa mga browsers. So, google.com. So, google.com is the domain name. So, the domain of google.com is .com. Okay? So, let's hope hindi tayo malito doon. So, let's say, for example, meron kayong uh, school. So, yourcollege.edu.ph. Okay? So, ano naman ang subdomain? Ito yung uh, before your domain name. So, let's say, for example, meron kayong sariling learning management system or may mga system na uh, ini-install yung uh, IT natin, MIS, okay? Or webinars. Ito yung mga subdomain. Okay, so, ang requirement for G Suite is edu.ph. So, siguro baka may magtanong, what if may existing website kami? Yung school namin is .com. So, we can assist you in registering G Suite. Uh, just email us. So, uh, yeah, for Region 1, muna, medyo pag-national, baka hindi namin masagot lahat ng questions nyo. So, .com po pwede po. So, we can email, actually, we may partner ang Google, uh, QSR. Yes, we can uh, coordinate with them para po may, may approve yung application natin. Okay, so where do we get edu.ph domain? So, sa www.edu.ph, you can register edu.ph domain. Um, basta meron tayong proof na school is recognized by the Philippine government. So, it's either DepEd, CHED, TESDA. So, basta meron tayong recognition pa papers. Okay? And then, let's say, hindi nyo naman masyado alam yung gagawin. You can create a letter of authorization kung sino yung nagre-register para sa inyo. So, let's say, for example, gumawa may third party kayo or private entity na magre-register para sa inyo. Uh, the institution or the school can create a authorization letter. Meron namang template dyan sa website nila para bigyan nyo siya ng authority to register in your behalf. And then after nyo mag-send ng requirements, you can pay through bank. Um, Kalimutan ko na yung bank eh, pero nandyan din sa website. So you can just deposit the payment. Uh, scan your payment slip and then send them the uh, deposit slip. So, after nyo maka-register, let's say for example, okay na, meron na kayong edu.ph. Okay? So, keep in mind na hindi nyo, let's say for example, wala pa kayo time na magkaroon ng website, pero for ngayon, kailangan din natin ng website. Okay? So, yung website natin, um, normally, naka-host yan sa cPanel or Ples or any other um, tools para makontrol ang ating web hosting. Web hosting kasi is ito yung pinaglalagyan natin ng mga files. So yung website natin or even nakalagay din dyan yung email natin. So ang gagalawin kasi doon is yung MX record. So I'm not going into detail to that pero ito yung ma kailangan lang na gagalawin. Okay, so let's make a demo. So, I pre-recorded this video para hindi tayo matagalan. And uh, sabi nga nila, demo, pag demo kasi, um, lahat pwede mangyari. Pwede mag-fail yung demo or something. So, to be safe, uh, may video tayo. Okay. So, how to register? So, just go to 
We'll just play. Okay, so just go to edu.google.com. Okay, so dito, magkikita nyo sa under products, meron dyan G Suite for Education. So, punta lang tayo dyan. Okay, and then sign up for G Suite. Yan. So, you're on your way. Okay, make sure na meron kayo ng mga details na to. So, beforehand, dapat meron na kayong details kung anong mga ilalagay natin sa registration. So, just click the next. Okay. okay. So, tell us about your institution. So, institution name. So, let's say, for example, Region 1 College. So, is it a primary or higher education? So, let's say higher education. Okay. So, what is your institution website? So, ito yung domain name. So, let's say, for example, sino ako ito, pinaalam ko muna sa misis ko. So, lynettecaptures.com. Okay. So, how many users or students na nandyan? Siya lang po ang estudyante dyan. <laughs> okay. So, pili tayo ng country. So, make sure na active yung institution phone number para makareceive tayo ng notification or you can recover your login sa G Suite. Okay. So, I'm just typing. Okay. So, address. So, dapat ma-fill out natin lahat ng field. So, actually, ang um, required dito is yung street address. Okay. Let's just say dito sa Ched Region 1 address. Okay. So, from San Fernando. Okay. So, dito ko lang. San Fernando City, Postal Code, so Province, so La Union. So click Next. And then what's your contact info? So ito yung magiging name ng administrator account. So I'm putting my email. So current email, limitin ko muna yung support at chedar1.com. So do you have your institution domain? So yes. So, yung tinipe natin kanina, yung lynettecaptures.com. Okay, ito yung domain name. Okay, so use this domain to set up the account. Of course. So, next. So, ano yung magiging account ng super admin natin? Yung magmanage ng G Suite account natin. So, let's say G Suite at lynettecaptures.com. So, I'm setting a secure password, at least eight characters. Okay, so great. Ayan, register na tayo. So, pwede na nating i-open yung G Suite for education. Okay. So, let's read yung consent. Siyempre, agree tayo dyan. Okay, so other security feature here na hindi tayo basta-basta. Just follow the instructions, agree and continue. Okay, so um, dahil gumagamit ako ng Uh, .com domain. So, I have 14-day trial sa G Suite. So, kung edu.ph, normally, automatic yan before mag-expire yung 14-day, um, you will be approved to use yung G Suite for ever. <laughs> for life. Okay. So, so, I can use G Suite using .com domain right now, pero trial version lang siya. So, hindi ko pwedeng mag-add na maraming users. Ayun. Okay? So, success. So, eto na yung G Suite for Education. Ayan. So, verify natin kung sa atin ba yung domain. Kasi, yung iba pwedeng um, kinukuha na lang kahit anong domain. I-register. So, there are many ways on how to verify your domain. So, what is text, 
we have CNAME, meta tag, and upload an HTML file. So the easiest way is to upload HTML file. So download ko lang yung HTML file, and then i-upload ko doon sa website natin. Okay, website or web hosting. So you will be using the cPanel or, or Plus na sinabi ko kanina. Okay, so na-download ko na yung file. Okay, so nandito ako sa cPanel. So I can upload yung file na dinownload ko coming from the G Suite setup. So HTML file siya. There you go. So na-upload ko na. So ilalagay natin sa public HTML. Usually ganyan po ang uh, format ng web hosting. So click natin continue. So alam naman natin na na-upload na. Testing nga natin kung uploaded talaga. Yun. So nagpakita yung file. So verify my domain. So verifying. Ayan. So, pag ginawa ko ng live to, medyo mas matagal. So, ayan. So, verified na yung domain. Na atin talaga yung domain name. Now, we can create users. So, let's add a new user. So, ito na yung pwede natin ibigay sa mga faculty, uh, administrators, or within the organization. So, let's say... John Doe at LynetteCaptures.com. Okay. So, you can set an automatic password and ask for change of password after they log in. Okay. So, you can send them this password. Tapos, pagka log in nila at their first log in, mag-change password sila. So, you can bulk upload. Merong CSV file dyan. Okay. Para... Pero you can do that um, after ma-approve yung G Suite for Education natin. So right now, trial version, pa-isa-isa or may limit siya. Okay, try ko mag-login as John Doe at lunettecaptures.com. Okay, so lagay ko yung password na create ni Google kanina. There you go. So... Successful yung login natin. Um, valid yung user na yun. So, you accept lang yung user. And then, you create your own password. So, kung faculty ito, um, sila na ang nakakaalam ng password. Hindi na alam ng administrator. Okay, so medyo unsecure yung password ko. Kaya, ulitin ko na lang. Okay, so success. Ayan, so meron na siyang G Suite for Education account na pwede siyang mag-login sa Gmail. So, complete domain name nang dapat ang ilalagin nila. Okay, so mapapansin nyo, unlimited ito. So, they can access Google Drive, Google Sheets, which is discussed earlier in Lynette. Okay, so what's next? So right now, active yung user, pero hindi pa yan nakaka-receive ng email. Okay. So ano ba yung next na gagawin? So kasi um, possible na yung um, gumagamit kayo ng existing email, actually you can migrate your old email dito sa G Suite. So kung ilang gig yan, um, pwede nyo i-migrate dito lahat. So now, we activate Gmail for lynettecaptures.com. So, ito na yung um, pag activate ng G Suite. So, remember, meron nga tayong user account, pero hindi pa siya nakaka-receive ng email coming from other uh, email addresses. So, right now, ito yung pinoint out ko kanina. I-edit natin yung MX record. So, medyo technical part na ito. So, yung mga administrators, 
ng website natin, um, they can use this instruction para mapagana yung G Suite. So, pwede na tayong makareceive ng email using the G Suite. Okay, so, uh, activate, activate Gmail. So, dito sa cPanel, meron silang tinatawag na Zone Editor. Ayan. So, sa domain name kasi natin, marami ang mga records. So, one of that record is yung tawag nilang MX record. Okay. So, MX record. Ayan. So, merong nakalagay na isa. So, ang ibig sabihin kasi nito, um, yung email, yung mga email pumapasok dito sa server. Ngayon, uh, ililipat natin doon sa G Suite server. So, Binigay naman ito ng G Suite kung ano yung mga ilalagay natin. So, i-delete ko ito. So, ayoko nang gamitin yung old, pa, uh, old emails. So, ilagay ko lang lahat ng MX record. So, anong priority niya? Actually, nakamali ako dito. Dapat one. So, i-add lang natin lahat ng nandito. So, to make sure na makaka-receive tayo ng email from uh, other email provider like Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, meron pa bang Hotmail? Rocket Mail. Okay. So, i-add record lang natin lahat. Okay. So, pag na-add na, pwede na nating i-test or i-verify. So, activate Gmail. <laughs> okay. So, nagka-error. So, nagkamali yata ako ng tinay. So, ulitin ko ito. So, add ulit ako ng MX record. Okay. So, i-copy ko itong first kasi missing. Wala daw. Okay. So, add record. MX. One. And then, yun. So, add. So, i-activate natin ulit. So, reactivate siya. So, waiting. So, yan. Added. So, successful daw yung pag-add natin ng MX record. So, right now, pwede nang makareceive ng external email itong sinetap natin na linetcaptures.com. So, you can try Gmail, Set up mobile devices. Yeah. So let's test para ma-check natin kung napapadala ba talaga yung email address, yung email na papadala natin. Okay, so ito yung email. So let's refresh. Yun. So may pumasok yung test email natin. So, meaning, um, pwede na tayong makareceive ng kahit kaninong email. Okay? So, ako, let's say, for example, Lynette Captures, uh, G Suite at LynetteCaptures.com Pagpadala ako sa support at Chedarowan.com So, check natin kung pumasok. Okay. So, here it is. So, pumasok yung email natin galing sa G Suite. Um, ay, ibang email pala to. So, ito yung email. May, mapapadalhan kayo ng G Suite email kung successful yung registration. Okay, so ito yung email na natanggap natin sa linetcaptures.com na domain name. So, magre-reply ako kung makakareceive nga ba talaga. So, babalik ako dito sa email. Yan, medyo na traffic. 
Yun. So, pumasok na yung email galing sa cheddarwan.com. Okay. So, there is. So, yun yung pag-setup natin and pag-test kung gumagana ang G Suite natin. So, right now, pwede kong gamitin itong setup ko for 14 days. So, they have plenty of time para i-verify yung uh, domain nyo kung institution ba yan. Okay, you can also create groups. You can also create uh, organizational units. Okay. So, pwede rin kayong mag-restrict ng mga application na pwedeng i-access ng student. Let's say, for example, magbibigay kayo ng account sa students, pwede nyong restrict kung ano lang yung uh, dapat nilang ma-access. Okay. So, application and services. So, ito nga yung diniscuss kanina. We have Google Drive, uh, Classroom, Gmail, Calendar, Google Docs. Sheets, slides, forms, and many more. So, sa Google Drive natin, pag G Suite, uh, we have unlimited DC space. Pag mapapansin nyo sa Gmail, we have 15 gig only. So, kung nag-exit kayo doon, kailangan yung uh, bumili. Uh, I think ang susunod is 100 gig, and then 500 gig, and then 1 terabytes. So, yun is may bayad na. Okay? Um... Sa G Suite, it's free. So, unlimited. So, ang makikita nyo lang doon sa baba, kung ilang gig ang nagamit nyo. Unlike sa free, um, using uh, 10 gig or 15 gig. It's free for education. So, there you have it. Um, that's how we set up the G Suite for education. Alright. Yeah. Um... So, sa mga uh, ibang teachers na nandito, baka hindi kayo aware, baka meron kayong G Suite, hindi nyo lang natatanong sa uh, IT admin ninyo or sa mga, um, tawag nun, yung mga IT, ICT um, office ninyo. Kung meron kayong existing website, baka nai-enroll na rin ng ICT office ninyo, tanongin ninyo sila para pwede kayong makahingi ng um, G Suite account. Yun. Yun. Sa, region, uh, sa Region 1, HEIs naman po namin na nandito, um, magkakaroon po kami ng project. Um, tutulungan po namin ang HEIs ng Region 1 na magkaroon ng uh, free G Suite um, exclusively for Region 1 higher education institution. So, um, hintayin niyo po yan. Ayan. So, we are um, accepting questions na po if you have, if you have, uh, okay, so we have now public. Uh, what if the computer get corrupted with the file can be secured in the platform? Actually, yes. Um, that a um, ang meron ng Google Drive is yung Google uh, backup and ink. So you can install that in your Windows computer. Um, it will do backup and sync doon sa server. Pero kapag Gmail ang gamit mo, syempre, limited, limited tayo sa uh, capacity, 15 gig lang. So, you have to buy larger uh, this space. Pero kung G Suite ka, unlimited. So, you can back up all the files na nandun sa uh, computer mo. Uh, recently, naglabas sila nung uh, Google File Stream. Okay? So, ang ginagawa ng Google File Stream, parang nagmamap lang siya ng additional drive dyan sa computer mo. So, pagka-open mo ng uh, Windows Explorer mo, uh, magkakaroon ng separate drive. So, actually, you can um, assign a letter. So, di ba, meron tayong drive C, drive D, anon. so you can use drive Z. So, ilagay nyo yung uh, Google uh, file stream nyo, drive Z, so, o pwede yun. Okay. okay, another question. Ayan. So, it 
Is it right for a teacher to have his or her own Google Classroom without using the G Suite of the school? Okay. If wala pang G Suite yung, H- yung school ninyo, you are free to use Google Classroom because Google Classroom is available uh, naman in a free uh, Google account. Um, however, if, if for you, okay yung, okay yung Google Classroom, you can facilitate teaching na, na uh, gamit siya agad na mga studyante mo, and then... Um, it's time for you na ituro naman sa kanila. Na, ano lang yun eh, if, if gusto mo na lahat kayo na co-teachers mo gumamit ng Google Classroom, um, i-share mo sa kanila, turuan mo yung mga co-teachers mo how to use it uh, para ma-enggan nyo yung HCI or yung school ninyo to have uh, a G Suite for education. Okay, so may add, so kapag yung Gmail account ang ginamit nyo sa Google Classroom, so it has a limit of um, class members 150. So classes you can join 100 maximum, 30 per day. So classes you can create 30 per day. So class members 100 per day per teacher. So medyo limited job. Pero kung hindi naman ganun kalaki yung classroom nyo, okay lang ito. Pero kapag sa G Suite, uh, you can create unlimited classroom. So classes you can join, 1,000. Classes, class members, up to 1,000. So, pero kung gusto niyo talagang i-manage, uh, sometimes much better na gawin na small yung classroom. Pag sobrang dami kasi mahirap po siyang i-monitor. So, I think personal Gmail account will be. Ayan. So, ito. Ayan. 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 Ito, magandang question to. Can the administrator just take the account of a teacher, especially if he or she is separated from the institution? Yes po. Um, kailangan dapat magkaroon ng policy rule yung eskwelahan natin na um, in case na meron tayong GC for education, dapat meron din tayong ng rules as an administrator na what if mag-resign ito? Kasi ang possibility niyan pag hindi pa na-delete nung admin yung Gmail niya, pwede niyang gamitin pa ito eh. So, para to avoid that, kasi hindi naman na siya connected, um, sabihin lang natin sa admin, dapat alam niya yung mga nagre-resign na teachers or yung nagre-resign na teachers or even students, pag nag-graduate ng, pag nag-graduate ng students, hindi na, nila, hindi na nila pwedeng ma-access yung, yung G Suite nila dahil wala naman na sila sa institution. So, uh, there must be a written rule or policy within your institution regarding that. Okay, so just to uh, stick pick lang yung sinasabi ni sir. So kung, kung pwede mo siyang i-delete. Okay, actually yes. So you, you just go to users. Okay. So, okay, let's log out. How to log in? Admin.google.org. So, login kayo doon, yun na yung G Suite natin. So, nag-click ako kanina doon sa user. So, ito yung user natin. So, ano yung gusto natin gawin? Let's say, for example, pwede natin suspend or delete user. So, delete user. Ayan. So, uh, ano yung gusto natin gawin? Yung ownership, yung data. So, pwede natin transfer to the admin. Okay, or kung suspend lang, okay lang naman. So, you can suspend. Okay, so you can suspend the user. They can no longer uh, lag. Okay. Okay. G Suite Takan is for HEIs only po. How about some institutions na nagkikater ng interns for internship program like nursing and other courses require clinical duties? Can the non-HEI can get the G Suite account since the setup for now is more on e-platform po? Yes po, you can get a G Suite account kahit hindi po kayo HEIs. Um, uh, yung kanina, uh, ito dapat uh, shed, recognize, um, DepEd, uh, Tesda. Okay. So, yun yung mga requirements. 
sigalan natin ng edu.ph. Pero business yung tinatalong niya. Business. I think medyo kung tayo doon. Kasi Ayan. parang private na siya eh. So hindi siya as in... Oo, oh, nag, for education niya, pero for on private side. Pero uh, let's see, uh, tanong natin sa QSR, actually a partner from Google, na baka pwede natin i-consult sa kanila. Okay, so meron pa tayo? Ayun, ito. Ayan. Ma'am Lynette, which is more convenient to use, Google Meet or Zoom? Okay. Um, Siyempre, for me, Google Meet po, kasi uh, pwede mo na siyang i-integrate dun sa Google Calendar para ma uh, at the same time na no-notify ako. Ang ang Zoom kasi, um, sorry sa mga Zoom users, pero medyo, medyo makulo siya sa akin. And there are reports naman na lumabas na na nahahack yung, yung Zoom. Okay. Yan. So, for me, for me um, Google Meet yung mas prefer namin dito sa office na video mo for uh, conference. Other question? Ito. Si Miss Eileen Deleon. So, hello. Can I clone the same subject? Given the lesson have been uploaded, but with another set of students. Yes, po. Pwede niyo po kung i-copy yung um sub yung yung copy yung subject niyo sa Google sa Google Classroom. Pwede niyo siyang uh, gawing multiple. Yan. At saka pwede kayong mag mag export ng lessons sa isang subject ililipat niyo sa kabilang sa kabilang section, pwede yun. Ayun. Ito. Medyo bang kailangan natin tagasahan si Sir. Wilfred Pagorogo. So, hello. Matagal na kami may Google Suite uh, ako nag-set up. Nahirapan lang sa schedule ng rollout. So, paano po mag-rollout sa school para mas create nila faculty members yung features training na admins, faculty members, students, and mga requirements din po. I, I think, sir, if meron ng existing uh, Google for Education, um, um, balikan mo lang yung edu.google.com. Maraming resources doon na pwede mong i-download or pwede mong ipakita sa mga teachers mo. Pwede ikaw na yung mag-initiate uh, ng um, seminar or hindi naman seminar or meeting sa kanila para ma-explain mo isa-isa yung um, features ng Google Google Suite for Education G Suite for Education if taga region 1 ka <laughs> if taga region 1 ka i-contact mo lang kami email mo lang kami and then ito, if taga NCR ka um, here is Miss Camille Singson Cabatu from QSR. You can e you can email them at education at qsr.com.ph. Um, if if you have NCR ka, pwedeng sila ang mag-cater nung needs mo. And Miss Camille, thank you Miss Camille for tuning in. If you have Region 1 ka, pwedeng kami yung uh, tumulong sa inyo. Especially pwede kaming mag-reach out sa mga higher education institution ng Region 1, pwede nyo kaming reach out. If NCR or uh, Region 4, 4A, uh, Ms. Kamil, nandiyan yung, yung email nyo, pwede nyo siyang ito. Yan, siguro yung nag-question kanina doon sa uh -oh. institution or yung private entity, uh -huh. uh, kay ma'am, Kamil, nyo po uh, further escalate yung question nyo kung pwede ba kayong maka- Avail ng GC for education. Yes po. For outside region 1. Pag region 1 naman po, you can um, tap us naman po. Lalo if you're an HEI, pwede nyo kaming, alam nyo naman po ang email namin if HEI po kayo ng region 1. So, thank you. Ayan. Okay, so meron tayong tanong kay Maria in Cortez. So, if you can delete the account, 
do they have also the capacity to access the account? So, mm. kung, kung na-delete na, hindi na nila ma-access yun. Okay. Yung maganda. So, or baka naman sa admin, ma-access ko pa ba yung account? So, uh, yung mga existing user, users mo, ma-access mo lang siya unless reset mo yung password. So, pero, bakit mo i-reset yung password kung ginagamit naman nila? So, malalaman din ng user yun na na-reset yung password kapag hindi na sila makalat. Okay. Pili ka pa. Okay, so may mga questions pa ba tayo? Okay, so okay, Sir De La Cruz, can I share live video of me or my desktop with the class in G Suite for Education? So actually, uh, masasagot na yan ng Google Meet. So, gawa lang kayo ng uh, meeting, classroom. Uh, you can schedule your meeting pasok sila doon, then uh, you can share your video and then share your desktop kung may PowerPoint kayo or may mga slides kayo or even yung um, extra monitor para mas madaling mag-share. So, po, pwede yun. So, it is possible. Okay. So, ito. Okay. So, in an HEI with multiple campuses, is it advisable to a G Suite for education per campus? Uh, actually, in my experience, nangyari yan. So, uh, multiple campuses have different um, domain. So, makakaiba sila. Uh, may edu.ph, may .com. So, ang nangyari lang kasi, parang makakahiwalay sila. So, ang ma-advise natin, dapat isa na lang yung um, G Suite for Education na gamitin. Mas maganda yun, di ba? Uh, Siyempre, we learn as one, parang as one pa rin. So, same HEI din naman sila, multiple campuses lang. So, ang mangyayari nito, ang uh, administrator is centralized. So, para makontrol din natin kung sino yung may mga account, sino yung mga uh, dapat magkaroon ng G Suite for Education. Okay, ganun pa ba? Ito. <laughs> okay. Ayan. Ito magandang question to. When evaluation or accreditation comes, how can they objectively see or evaluate the classrooms, the Google Classroom, without the doubt that teachers not make editing and manipulations, correcting previous posts, or making the classrooms good looking for evaluation or accreditation? May time stamp po ang Google Classroom. So kapag nag-post ka, kung ano yung date and time na nag-post ka, makikita yon. At kailan, At kailan nag-submit yung estudyante mo ng kanilang requirements, makikita din. If, if ano yung grade mo sa kanila, kailan mo sinend, um, an, kailan mo binigay yung grade na yon, sino yung mga late, anong, or, anong date, makikita mo lahat yon. So, hindi mo siya, hindi mo siya may edit Ayan. for the sake of accreditation. So, if, if ano talaga, if passion mo talaga to use uh, educational technology, um, gagamitin at gagamitin mo to with or without accreditation dahil real-time naman siya, hindi naman na-edit yung oras. Yun. Any questions, Sir Elvin? Okay, oh, na. Tara tayo. Ito. So, Hi, sorry. Sir Elvin. And, so, good afternoon, the Paul of City. Are there maximum numbers of students? limit of sections in a Google Classroom. In regular Gmail, meron. So, I think na panggit ko na ito kanina, um, 250 yata yung kanina. Pero kapag G Suite, unlimited, unlimited classroom. 1,000 students. So, per classroom. So, sa sobrang dami nun, may hirap na siguro imani. So, mas maganda separate classrooms per uh, per batch of 
students. Okay, so ito, yung trial. So how about the programming subjects for information technology just like Python? Can this with accommodate such a laboratory activities to an online platform? Okay, so ito, uh, ano ba yung gusto mong maging output nila? Is it the uh, code? Code ba? Or yung program? Okay. Um, honestly, hindi ko pa na try yung Python, pero nakikita ko siya. Um, depende kasi as instructor kung ano pa yung gusto mong output nila. Kung, um, kung yung code ba, gusto mong basahin yung code, kung tama ba yung code nila, or yung output. Yung output, uh, usually may mga uh, separate websites na pwede nilang gamitin para ma-deliver yung uh, sagot sa magiging question mo dun sa class. Meron, meron akong isha-share. <laughs> Ayan. So, ito yung collabora Ayan. ka collaboratory. If familiar kayo sa um, Jupyter Notebook, which is um, pwede kang mag-code ng Python doon, gumawa ng Google na parang ganon. Ang tawag doon, collaboratory. So, if meron kang existing Google account, actually kahit hindi na G Suite, pwede kang, pwede kang ano, pwede mong gamitin ito. So, uh, this is um, good news para sa mga um, Python programmers dyan. Uh, meron ng notebook, yan, collab, um, yung Google, yan. Ang tawag dyan, collaboratory. So, punta lang kayo sa collab.research.google.com or isearch nyo lang sa Google, mga IT tips dyan, uh, collaboratory. Iyon yung pangalan nung, nung applications. Yung application na to. Yeah. Okay, so meron pa tayong ganoon question dito. So what happens when we have an existing G Suite account and the HEI wants to create accounts for faculty under one domain? Will there be a, a problem? Of course, wala pong problema yun. So faculty nyo sila. So they should have a um, G Suite account para din sa work for for classes. So libre naman to. So uh, wala kayong problema sa babayaran niyo kasi G Suite na ang na-provide ng uh, service para sa atin. Okay, so another question. Yung view of life. Sir Elvin, the HI server is hosted by a provider. Is the process of setting up is the same with on-site server. Okay, so take note na kailangan nyo lang po malaman yung um, access kung paano nyo may edit yung um, MX record. Yun, yung name server. Yun po yung pinaka-importante. Uh, depende po kung ano yung um, access na binigay sa inyo. Uh, kung on-site server yan, normally meron yung server outside ng HE uh, HE ay, kung nasaan yung server nyo physically. So, meron niyang nasa labas na nagpo-point papasok. So, yun. So, maybe you should uh, coordinate with your uh, provider kung paano nyo i-update yung um, MX record. So, kung on-site naman yan, kung website nandiyan sa loob, so you can do that on your own. Pero yung MX record, yun na yung siguro kailangan nung technical details ng web hosting provider. Ayan. Um, Sige. Yung kay Ma'am Angie. Yan. From macro colleges na sinend kay Engineer Dolores. What will we do to make the mci.veganonline.com permanent after the trial period? So, um, balik tayo dun sa domain name. So, ang domain name is veganonline.com. So, is it a um, valid institution? Okay. So, yung MCI, ano bang MCI? Macro Colleges. Incorporated. So, parang uh, nagpa-subdomain kayo doon sa um, veganonline.com. So, veganonline.com. Check lang natin para ma-check na. So we suggest um bili na lang kayo ng um school domain ninyo uh, macrocolleges incorporated 
Uh, uh, vegan uh, online is like a page ng local government uh, unit. So if we go to mti.veganonline.com, okay. So mas uh, possible pa rin naman na gamitin natin ang mci.veganonline.com pero sobrang haba na po. So magkakaroon kayo ng email address like Elvin at mci.veganonline.com so, Sobrang uh, may subdomain siya. Usually, normally, ang email addresses is domain name lang. So, mas maganda siguro mag-purchase na lang po kayo ng uh, new domain name. Edu. Okay. Ph. So, macro colleges, you can assist. Yeah. So, email macro, lang po kayo ta, post, para meron. Coordinate lang po kayo sa amin. Tutulungan namin kayo. Macro colleges. Set up, uh, <laughs> set up, set up yung G Suite. Thank you. Yeah. Ito. So, from Mamjo, are there apps too for library use since G Suite is for classroom? And can we use, can we use the Google Docs and Sheets if online? Yes, ma'am. I-share ko lang po itong page na ito. Ayun. So, share. Nakikita niyo po. Ayan. So, ito. You can use Google Drive files online. So, ang gagawin lang po natin, punta tayo sa drive.google.com, uh, punta tayo sa uh, Google Docs, i-right-click natin, and if you want to say it offline, merong option doon na available offline. I-turn on, i-turn on nyo lang. Okay, i-turn on nyo lang yung uh, available offline. Kaya kahit makauwi yung studyante, nag, mag, tapos na siyang nagklase, nakauwi na siya, um, uh, pwede, pwedeng mabasa pa rin niya yung document na yon offline kapag um, clinic lang niya yung feature na yon So, okay. Yan. So, magbasa lang tayo ng comments. Yan. Kudus, Chad R01, God bless you always. Please continue to share this kind of worldwide Worldwide endeavor. Wag kayong mag-alala po, monthly na po ito. <laughs> As it surely helps educators in adapting the new normal. Yes po, this will be a monthly basis na po yung webinar namin. Iba't ibang topic. Uh, for, we for this week, common online platform until next week. Pero ma-assure ma kayo na iba't ibang topic Yan, every month. And thank you so much to the power couple. Thank you po, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Kasem. May your tribe increase. Uh, yun, sana. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Uh -huh. Ayon. Okay. So, e welcome lang po natin ang ating um, OIC, Chief Education Program Specialist, Sir Danilo Bose, for the um, closing remarks. Yan.
is being with us through this series of seminars. And let's assure that we will not stop until we provide you enough to 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 pay you in your daily life as part of the day. Okay, so for today's session, we thank our speakers. Uh, para magamit natin sa ating, uh, sa, while, while we report in our respective institutions. Uh, we hope also that uh, you will be with us until uh, we complete this series of webinars. Uh, again, uh, on behalf of CHED Region 1, and men and women uh, of uh, the office para magamit natin sa ating uh, well, 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 we report post in another months. meeting right now uh, uh, nag-attend din kami ng SUC meeting we hope also that uh, possible, uh, you will be with us modalities until na magagamit na uh, we complete a series of webinars so, uh, we again, you will uh, stay with us and on behalf of CHED Region 1 uh, and men and women uh, 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 the office uh, para magamit natin sa atin uh, well, uh, well, well, we uh, uh, and uh, 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 in uh, 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 time para magamit sa meeting here again we hope so that possible you will be with us modalities until na magagamit again we complete a series of webinars so we again continuous support on behalf of CHED Region 1 and men and women we hope well, that the office uh, para magamit uh, could uh, uh, provide you uh, well, see, well, see, well, to support uh, 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 again uh, 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 all the way from Bose, Casa Bose. Maraming salamat po. Okay. So, thank you po, Mr. Dani Sir Danilo Bose, for the uh, message. So, thank you po sa mga nanood sa aming webinar. Nasa na kayong husband? <laughs> so, maraming maraming salamat po. Alam ko, ito na po ang ating pinakahihintay. Ang link for certificate so ito po yung link sa certificate ched bit.ly slash ched session for g suite don't worry i-upload po namin yung link din sa facebook page namin pero kapag nakita nyo na siya ngayon mag uh, magsagot na po kayo ng feedback ang deadline po namin pasan siya na po kailangan namin iksihan 8 pm po ayun 8 pm po yung yung ating uh, deadline for uh, certificate 8 p.m. ngayon, May 19, 2020. Pag hindi pa po kayo nakapag-submit within 8 p.m. today, sorry po, hindi po namin kayo magbibigyan ng certificate. Um, anyway, marami pa naman ngayon. Ngayon. So, yung pag-release po namin ng certificate, meron po kaming ginawang website. Nandun po yon sa Facebook page namin. Um, Nag-update naman po yun kapag meron, ng, meron na kaming na-upload na certificate. certificate. Um, gusto lang namin po in mind, kasi konti lang, konti lang po kami dito. Um, um, be patient lang po sa paghihintay sa in-certificate namin, uh, na ninyo. Sa, noong May 14, upload naman na po namin yung mga e-certificate. Marami naman po naka-receive na. Thank you so much po. And remind lang po namin na 
purpose naman po ng webinar namin, hindi naman po certificate lang, yun po yung mabigyan namin kayo ng, ng learning, mabigyan namin kayo ng pangalaman, malaking bagay na po yun sa amin. At ginagawa namin po ito ng walang bayan. Ayan. Hashtag para sa bayan, hashtag public service, hashtag we learn as one. So, um, thank you so much, Sir Elvin. May sasabihin ka pa? Okay, so keep safe everyone. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you po.